Today I'm going to talk to you guys about seniors and how to close them. I often hear when I ride with associates in the field that seniors are the one area where they have trouble closing. I even hear that people don't even want to book seniors because they're afraid of them. Well actually I've had the same issues when I was a brand new associate. My mentor Vlad sat me down and taught me how to properly close them and after that my closing ratio went through the roof. I'm going to teach you something today that's going to double your paycheck and double your closing ratio when it comes to seniors. They're going to be the only thing that you want to see. Now when I go and see, uh, see a senior or someone who's elderly or getting up in the, in the years, the first thing I do when I go in the home is I do warm up and everything the same. My entire script, my entire presentation is actually the same until I get to C1. C1 where we're identifying the problems. Now what I say to them is that there's one major area of concern that they came up with. And that is your funeral and your final expenses. Then I go right into C3, which is the fu uh, funeral uh, problem and solution. So I'll say there's one major problem that they found, and that is your funeral and final expenses. Now let me ask you, Jim, who's going to be responsible, responsible for taking care of your funeral? Sharon? And Sharon, who's going to be responsible for taking care of your funeral? Obviously, Jim. Well, either you had to plan a funeral before. Well, the reason I asked is because funerals are becoming a serious problem. The reason is, is that nowadays funeral directors are requiring all or the bulk of the money up front before they'll do anything. Or they want to know where that money's going to come from. Did you realize that? Well, a lot of members don't. Now, the Teamsters realizes that most of the members do have other life insurance, but it's going to take some time for that money to come into the family. So let me ask you, Jim and Sharon, who needs to come up with that money in the, in the meantime? The family, exactly. Now, they're either going to have to go down to the bank and take it out of their savings, or probably retirement savings, or worse yet, they're going to have to borrow it. Well, they didn't think that was a good idea for their members. In fact, what they found the members, seniors were doing, is that they were taking care of their funerals in three different ways. And the first way that they found the seniors were taking care of their funerals is they were going down to funeral homes and putting a lump sum payment down. Anywhere from $6,000 all the way to $10,000. And that's great because they, get, they would have everything taken care of. So let's see, they got everything taken care of. Their family has nothing to worry about. And of course, they, have the, they also have the peace of mind of knowing when something happens, the family's going to be looked after, right? So peace of mind. However, when they researched it, what they found is that first of all, those Seniors or those, those union members, they were taking that lump sum, six to $10,000 out of their own retirement savings or their own bank account and giving it to the funeral director. Now let me ask you, Jim, if I give you a $10,000, if you gave me $10,000 today now as a funeral director, what do you think I'd do with it? Huh? Invest it, exactly. That's exactly what the funeral director is doing it. So when something happens 10, 20, 15, 30 years down the road, the funeral director has doubled or tripled their money. On top of that, what they found out is that in most states, the funeral home cannot allow you to take care of cash disbursements up front. What are cash disbursements? Well, those are things like your honorarium for your church, flowers, limousine, all the lunch, all that stuff that adds up. So what they found, the Labor Advisory Board found, was that this was not a very good option for their members. The second way they found out the union members were taking care of their funerals is that they were going down to funeral homes and actually making like a car, car payment, signing a contract where they would give anywhere from maybe $150 to $500, $600 a month to pay for the cost of that funeral. Which is a great idea. Why? Well, because everything's taken care of. The family has nothing to worry about. and they have peace of mind. Now when they researched it, what they found was happening though is that they were making a $250 a month payment. Let me ask you, Jim, if you gave the funeral director $250 a month for the next four months and then you died, how much money would the funeral director have? Huh? Exactly, $1,000, $1,000, right? But how much is your funeral? 
Well, anywhere from eight to 10,000. So how much money is the difference there? Exactly, $9,000, right? So who has to come up with the rest of the money? Exactly, the family. So what they found was that this was not an option for the union members either. The third way they found a lot of union members were taking care of it is because they knew that they had a little bit of their union insurance left or that they had their estate or their house. And they would just say, the third way, when something happens, my family is going to take care of it. And they would say, well, our house is worth $300,000. When we die, the kids can sell it and they'll have more than enough money to take care of the funeral. But when they looked into what they found was happening was that it takes quite some time for the family to actually sell the house. So in the meantime, the family has to take it out of savings or worse yet, go down to the bank and borrow it. So they said this isn't an option for the union members either. But what they did say is they wanted to make an affordable option for all the union members so that absolutely every union member who's a retiree out there can afford the pro program. So what they did is they said they're going to create the program in three different ways. The first way is the union member can contribute $1.50 a day, $2 a day, or $2.50 per day. And what they actually called it was a small cup, a medium cup, and a large cup of coffee. Now I want to show you something, Jim. What they did, Jim, is they created this special certificate. It's called the Freedom of Choice Certificate. And the way it works is that when something happens to yourself or Sharon, you just take this down to the funeral director that you're, you choose for your Sharon, if something happened to you, or Jim. Sharon, you take that when something happens to Jim. Present that to the funeral director, and from that point on, absolutely everything's taken care of. So what they've done is they've created this program. So Sharon, when something happens to you, and a small cup of coffee a day, what they're going to do is set $7,000 aside for your final expenses and Jim for you, $6,500. And for the medium cup of coffee a day, actually for Sharon, what they're going to do is set aside $9,000 to take care of your final expenses and for Jim, for you, $8,700. And for the large cup of coffee a day, what they said is they're going to set aside $12,000 for you, Jim and 13700 for you, Sharon. Now, Sharon and Jim, while you guys are thinking about whether you want a small cup of coffee, a large cup of coffee, or a medium cup of coffee, what, I'm, what they're going to need me to do is go ahead and ask you the medical questions to see if you can even qualify. So then I'll go and I'll ask them all the medical questions, and I'll come back and say, Jim and Sharon, what size of cup of coffee did you guys want to go with? Fill out the medical questionnaire. Now, I've written all of this on the bottom of the T-sheet. After the third paragraph, I've written all of this right there for them. And before I went in the home in the back of my report card, I looked at Jim's age and I looked at Sharon's age and I wrote down what's putting aside $1.50 a day, which is $10 a week, $2 a day, which is $14 a week, or $2.50 a day, which is $17 a week, would do for them. Now remember, $1.50 a day, that's each. So that's a $20 a week enrollment. 14, that's a $28 a week enrollment. And 17, that's a $34 a week enrollment. So by doing that, not only do you have good, good, you still have good ALP per sale, but it's all ALP. And you've explained the program in a way that has eliminated all their objections up front. They've already got it taken care of. Well, the Labor Advisor Board, the union looked into it, they don't want it. Affordability, well, everybody drinks coffee. So the only question is, do they want a large cup of coffee, a small cup of coffee, or a medium cup of coffee? Thank you, guys. By using this, you're not only going to double your uh, retiree closing ratio, but you're also going to double your paycheck. Take these tools and go out and make this your very best week.